So hey guys, it's getting towards the back end of your school term, which means you're probably in the thick of things right now. You've got assignments, you've got talks, you've got essays, you've got exams. And yet maybe even hearing me say that, that's actually just getting you a little bit stressed out. Add on top of that, you know, you've had all these weird weeks of half school cancelled because of the rain. You've got all your jobs to do at home. You've got COVID tests, you've got isolation, and you're still trying to study and balance a social life on top of all of this. It's absolutely exhausting. And hey, I feel for you. I really do. But I just want you for a second, I just want you to imagine a Saturday. It's a Saturday coming up. It's only a couple of weeks away even. It's the first Saturday of school holidays. Just imagine this, you've gone to the sunny coast with your friends, you're sitting on the beach, you've got a bucket of hot chips in one hand, you've got a cold drink in the other, your assignments are done, there's no more expectations on you, you can just sit back, you can relax, you can have a well-earned rest. And hey, I can see a bunch of you out there, you're like, yeah, I am looking forward to that, that's going to be a great feeling, because hey, how good is rest, how good is it? when you can just sit down, when the stress, it just, it just washes away. You know, school holidays, that's two whole weeks of absolutely nothing to do. Life is great, isn't it? But hey, after those two weeks, you know, term two of school, it's back. You're back in the daily grind. It's only a temporary break. It's a great break, don't get me wrong. But how good would it be to actually have a genuine rest, a genuine constant rest, well, that's actually what we're looking at in the book of Matthew tonight. We're seeing in what we've just read, Jesus is actually offering this fantastic rest. We see it right there in verse 28. You know, Jesus says, hey, come to me and I will give you rest. On the one hand, it seems so simple, but on the other hand, there's actually a couple of questions that we can ask when we look at that. And that's actually the two questions we're going to be looking at tonight. So the first one of them is, how do we actually come to Jesus and to... What exactly is this rest that is on offer here? So we're actually going to start at verse 25 together. If you look at verse 25 and 26 again, it says this. It says, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. So hey, here, hey, here Jesus is actually praying publicly to his Father God. And now, if you cast your mind back to youth a couple of weeks ago, it was a few weeks ago now uh, with everything, when we last looked at Matthew, just uh, through verses 16 to 24, we actually saw Jesus give a warning to a bunch of people who they're like, oh yeah, Jesus is the saviour, but they sort of didn't really want to know him. They sort of wanted to keep him at an arm's length. And Jesus actually said to the go guys, he's like, hey, I've revealed to you who I am. You actually need to accept me as king. But yet here in this passage, he's praying and he's thanking God for hiding who he is from people. Seems like there's a massive contradiction, you know, on the one hand, hey guys, see me for who I am as king, and on the other hand, he's, thank you, Father, for hiding who I am from people. So, so what's actually going on here? Well, Jesus is actually talking about two different kinds of people here. And in doing so as well, he's actually revealing the kind of people who will be in his kingdom. You know, and that's actually the humble and the dependent. It's there in the second half of verse 25, it says, you know, and revealed them, not to the wise and learned, but to little children. Now, what he's actually saying here is, you know, when you come to Jesus, you actually have to come to him as a little child. Hey, now, I have a nephew. Uh, he's the cutest toddler you've ever seen. His name's Quinn. That's him up there on the screen. Uh, he's just turned one. He's just started to walk. He, he loves that he's able to now toddle around and really start uh, exploring things. But at the same time, he's actually completely dependent on his mum. It's like, Kate, she teaches him, she protects him, she feeds him. She, she basically gives him life. And Quinn, Quinn actually knows that he's dependent on his mum. Quinn knows that when he's hungry, he goes to his mum. He knows that when he feels like he needs protection, he can go straight to his mum. And hey, if we look at this passage, it's actually saying that when we come to Jesus... We're actually like children in that same way. You know, we need to be reliant on Jesus, dependent on him. We learn from him. We find our safety in him. See, coming to Jesus involves having a heart that wants to be taught, that wants to be loved. We need to be humble. 
we need to be dependent. And so in the previous passage, and even here, Jesus is actually addressing a crowd who didn't think like that. The people he's talking to, they're not coming to Jesus humbly, ready to listen. They're not coming to Jesus ready to be taught. They're actually coming and they're, like, they're full of pride. They're coming to him going, you know, Jesus, I know this. This is what you should be. They want to tell Jesus how to act, what he should do. And they couldn't actually really see who Jesus was because of their own pride, their own independence. Their own self-righteousness is actually getting in the way. So I actually want to ask you guys here a question tonight. How do you approach Jesus? You know, are you ready to be taught? So even, even on a more personal note, you know, what was your attitude when you came into the talk here at Youth Tonight? You know, you opened the Bible when Melinda read it for us. You maybe read along with the passage. But did you read it? Were you, were you ready to be taught? Or did you just switch off? Because you know what's going to be said, something about Jesus. But hey, Jesus, his kingdom is here on offer, not to those, but to the humble and dependent. So that's actually what our attitude has to be when we come to him. So that's all well and good. We have to come to him being humble and dependent. But how exactly do we come to him? So let's just check out verse 27 together real quick. Uh, Verse 27 says this. It says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So what we're seeing here, it's actually a really unique relationship between Jesus and his Father God. See, God has committed everything to Jesus. Jesus has the power to heal. He has power over creation. You know, we just saw that we have to be humble and dependent to come to God. And now we're seeing as well as that, there's actually only one way to God, and that is through Jesus. And hey, there is actually a lot of different ways that people think we can come to God. But here Jesus is pointing out that all the things that we might do, we think we might make us good enough to know God, those things are actually never going to be enough. And you know, you might be here, you might be thinking that the way to get to heaven is by doing the right thing, making sure you stick to the rules. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, if you know the Bible back to front, if you're just being a good person, if you pray all the time, and hey, don't get me wrong, all of those things are actually really good things. But if you're trying to do all these things by yourself without Jesus, if you're trying to make yourself good enough for God, ultimately you will fail because there is only one way to know God and that is through Jesus. To know God, you need to know Jesus. And to know Jesus, you ultimately need to know what he uh, came to earth to do, how he came to earth to die on a cross and to also to rise again. You can know God, you can come to God because Jesus died for you. You don't have to do all the hard work because Jesus has already done all the work for you. He's the one who makes you righteous. He's the one who makes you good enough and all is if you just put your trust in him. So hey, that actually answers our first question tonight of how do we come to God? Uh, But then we see also that there is that rest on offer, which also begs the question, what does it actually look like? What is it rest from? Let's just look at verse 28 again quickly. Verse 28, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And hey, just another question for you as well. You know, what's the first thing that pops out to you from what Jesus says in that verse? Do you see that and you just immediately hear the offer of rest? Maybe you hear that and you just, you're feeling on your own shoulders all your weariness, all your tiredness. You're thinking about all the burdens, all the hard things you're carrying around with you. Do you hear Jesus' words and think, if only, if only I had rest? Now, what about the daily grind, the exhaustion, the daily struggle some of you might face to get up in the morning? Maybe you've got physical health battles. Maybe you've got mental health battles. Did any of that come into your head? You know, weary, burdened. We need rest, don't we? We seek rest. We're always struggling and chasing and seeking just, just that smallest moment of rest where we get to take a break. You know, maybe we get there. Maybe for you, it's when you get home from school at the end of the day and you can finally sit down on the couch. Maybe you have your break when you finish your assignments. Maybe it's at the end of term when you have your holidays. Maybe it's when, for once, the arguing at home stops. Maybe you've had an okay mental health day. 
Maybe your anxiety attacks have subsided for a little bit. But hey, the hard stuff always comes back, doesn't it? Rest is never permanent. You've got to go back to school. You finished one assignment, but sure enough, the next day, they start again. You need to work to make money. Arguments, they are inevitable. Illness, it goes away and it comes back. Mental health rears its ugly head again. How often do we really feel restful? And so how enticing is Jesus' offer here? Because Jesus here isn't calling people who have it made with no struggles cruising through life. He's offering rest to everyone who needs it, who never feel like they can catch a break. You know, once again, he reminds us about who the kingdom is for, who he came for, not for the prideful, not for the independent, for the humble, the broken, the tired and weary, the ones who are sick of trying to be good enough, tired of trying to find rest and happiness in success in the next short break. He's coming here for the ones who realize they're broken and defeated. And he comes and he offers rest. And you might be here wondering, you know, what does this look like, though? A promise of rest like this, it actually just sounds too good to be true. What, what's on offer here? Is, is it a recliner and a house? Is Jesus going to do my assignments for me when I trust in him? Will my mental health battles just all of a sudden finally disappear? And hey, this isn't actually quite the rest that he's offering. He's not offering an escape from reality, a chance to be lazy, to turn into the person who just cruises through life. So what exactly is he offering here? He explains what true rest is uh, in verse 29. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And hey, Jesus' offer of rest here, it, it, it might almost shock you. He's just pulled the old switcheroo. I'll take this load off of you and give you a different one. You know, Jesus offers us his yoke. And, and a yoke, if you don't know, it's, it's an old farm tool. It used to be placed on two oxen or cows to, to plough our fields or to tow a cart. It's, it's a working tool. So Jesus is offering work. But hey, I want you to actually notice a key aspect of the yoke. It's for two. Jesus isn't dumping a load of stuff on us. Rather, he's offering to bear the load with us. He's asking you to learn from him, to trust in him, to believe that he is the Son of God. He's asking you to follow him, walk with him. And he gives you his justification for it because he's humble and gentle in heart. It's actually just a very different perspective of what true rest is. Hey, I just want you for a moment, just think through what gives you a feeling of rest and relief? Is it getting the best mark on your assignment? Is it achieving success? Is it the weekend, the holidays? Any escape? Is the next high from a drug or a numbness from a bottle? None of those are actually gentle and humble. They're actually demanding and unforgiving. Short microseconds of rest before they demand more and more of you. There's another assessment to nail, a higher goal to reach, five days until the next weekend, an entire term until the next holiday, a slump after the come down. Whatever we chase here for rest, it's demanding, it's exhausting, it's short-lived, and it's fleeting. So like I said before, Jesus doesn't offer us an escape from the realities of life, but he does offer us a way to live, which brings peace and rest and contentment. He offers a life that doesn't demand more and more of us. In fact, He's already done the work for us. He took on and defeated the biggest thing that's actually weighing us down, which is sin. And so now he calls us to live for him, to find rest in a, living, in, in a life living for a king who is humble, forgiving, patient, kind, loving. The offer is to find rest in a king who brings fulfillment. So I'll ask again, you know, what's in your yoke with you right now? They are made for two we are always carrying something, whether or not we realise it. Is it success, grades, popularity, perfectionism? They are so demanding. You're strapped in with them and they just keep demanding more and more and more of you. You might seem to be all good and you might keep up for a while, but eventually it will wear you down, you will be knackered. And hey, people even realise this in the world today. You know, we're constantly told, strive for individuality, follow your dreams, make a difference in the world, just go your own way. And it all actually does sound so great and restful. 
But hey, what happens if you fail your tests? You don't get the marks to study in your dream uni course. You want to go on a holiday. Turns out you don't have enough money. All these things you filled your yoke with, they sound great, but they are, in fact, just hard work. Just look quickly with me at verse 20, though. It says, for my yoke is easy. Uh, verse 30, sorry. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So whatever you've got in your yoke, why not replace it with Jesus? I'm not saying there's no work to do, no life to live, but Jesus, he will be there with you. In fact, he's actually, he's gone ahead and he's done it for you. There's rest and contentment, joy and peace to be found in Jesus. Now, maybe you feel like you're alone with your load. You're not even striving for something because the weight of anxiety, depression, a broken down relationship, addiction, regret. You're tired, you're weary, you're lost. Take on Jesus. He's humble and gentle. He offers rest. He helps you bear the load. It might not disappear, but you can find rest in the fact that he loves you. He died for you and rose again so that you can have life. It's not a burden you have to carry alone. And it's a free offer of rest from God. And look, if you've already come to him, that's amazing. That's so good. But if you want to know more about finding about, out how God's rest changes your life, hey, I challenge you as we move into squads now, that's a question that would be great to ask your squad leaders. Ask them how having rest and how sharing the weight, the yoke with Jesus has changed their life. And hey, if you don't know God, if you haven't come to him, the offer for true rest is there. In fact, it's more than just an offer. It's actually an invitation so the question is, are you ready to take up that invitation? Maybe you're not sure how, maybe you're nervous, uh, but I'm actually going to pray for us all right now. And I want to invite you to pray along with me. We're going to be thanking God for this awesome invitation, for the rest that he does give us, and I also am going to be praying for anyone who wants to take up this invitation. So again, if that is, in, if that is you, uh, just listen to uh, what we're praying and do uh, pray along with me as well. We're going to pray now, so let's pray. Yeah, dear Lord, I just do thank you for this offer of rest, this invitation for rest that you do give us. I just do thank you that you did come to die on the cross to take away our sin. I just do thank you that you offer to bear our load, bear our burden with us. Lord, I just do pray for anyone, any of us who are looking to have that rest, to take up that invitation that uh, you would help us to come to you, that you would help us to humble ourselves, to become dependent on you and come to you as a little child. I just do pray all of this in your name. Amen. Ooh.